Hi, my name is Matt Fleming and I'm the VP of Marketing for Newtonian. In today's tutorial, we will be discussing how to predict bodily insurance claims uh, using machine learning, Eureka, and data provided by Allstate and Kaggle.com. So without further ado, let's get started. So to get the ball rolling, uh, we can go ahead and open up the Kaggle.com uh, competition page. To give a little background, Allstate had originally provided this data to Kaggle uh, as a part of a competition to predict bodily insurance claims um, based on uh, various vehicle characteristics or anonymous characteristics. So it, just to reiterate, Kaggle is an amazing resource for those of us in the machine learning community and those of us uh, who want to be able to play with real world data sets um, that are, and also actually try and solve real world problems. So I highly encourage uh, those of you who are, you know, just starting to get familiar with machine learning or those of us who are a little bit deeper or uh, further advanced in our knowledge to continually check out Kaggle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and download the data uh, just to show you guys where it is. You can get to it via the left hand menu. Um, the data that we need are, uh, or the data files that we need are two. Uh, we need the training set and the test set and they're provided in two different formats, uh, .7z and .zip. I took the easy path and just went ahead and downloaded the .zip file simply because OS 10 or OS X uh, does not have native support for .7z, uh, at least at the time of this tutorial. So you know, whichever is easier for you, but you may need to download an uh, alternate program to open the .7z file. Um, in terms of the data itself and kind of the competition, I mean, as I said earlier, really what they're trying to figure out is how all of these various risk factors um, could potentially lead to a claim. So the challenge for Allstate, granted they provide us uh, probably likely a subsection of their data, is that they have thousands of variables in millions of records and they're trying to figure out you know, one, which variables are actually important or matter in predicting claims, but then two, equally as, and probably equally as important, is figuring out the relationship between those risk factors. Uh, are they dependent upon one another? How do they actually influence a claim? And that's uh, the purpose of this tutorial and that's what we're going to be digging into. So once you've downloaded the data, um, you'll note that it is a massive file. Uh, if you go ahead and try and import this into Eureka immediately, um, um, it will not be able to open because it's in, it's in excess of one million rows. You'll find the same thing if you try to open it in Excel. So what we're going to do, uh, just for the purposes of this tutorial, I don't necessarily recommend it as best practice, is to downsample the file. Downsampling the file is relatively intuitive in OS X. I'm not sure what the exact command is in Windows, but to go ahead and downsample the file in uh, OS X or Linux, you can use uh, the head command. So what we're essentially doing is taking the first 200,000 rows of this uh, CSV and uh, creating a new file. So the command, just to show you guys, is head hyphen n 200,000, that's the number of rows, this is the original file uh, that we downloaded from Kaggle, and now this is the new downsampled file. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run that. And as you can see, there's going to be a few other files in this directory, but we now have a new file called downsample, which has 200,000 um, rows of the training data. So let's go ahead and import that into Eureka. Uh, you can go ahead and do that by uh, opening up Eureka, obviously, first of all, going to uh, uh, file then import data and let's go ahead and select downsample.csv So it's going to take a sec. Don't worry. It's not hanging. Uh, it's going to parse the values It's going to input them and then we can start talking about uh, how we can set up Eureka uh, or point it uh, in the right direction in terms of the search Okay, so the data has imported into Eureka or is finished importing into Eureka one quick note um, when I've imported it since we downsampled the file to the first 200,000 rows. There wasn't a description row at the top. So uh, you may want to open up that downsampled file and just insert a description row uh, at the top, or you can just import it into Eureka and then just make sure that you shift everything down. So if you look at the sample data, it is pretty much all blind data. Um, obviously the calendar year and the model year, uh, that's pretty, pretty intuitive. The categorical data, that's blind as well, uh, although we we're led to believe that it's tied to uh, vehicle characteristics. Um, 
these variables as well, we don't really know what they're in reference to. The one we do care about is claim amount. And if you'll note here, it's extremely, uh, or it's very sparsely populated. So we're gonna have to adjust for this when we actually go and set up our target expression. So let's go ahead and go to the prepare data tab. In the prepare data tab, that's where we do everything from eliminating outliers to smoothing to uh, how we, uh, determining how we handle missing values. So uh, just for the background of kind of how we approach this, at Newtonian, we tend to do as little data preparation as is appropriate for the first time we work with a new data set. Uh, we'll go through, we'll model it, and then once we've actually kind of built that first model, uh, where we, just to get a general idea of like, kind of how the data relates to each other, then we'll go back and say, okay, well, how can we improve the accuracy and the simplicity of the model by, uh, for instance, removing outliers, smoothing, certain, smoothing potentially some of the data. Um, one thing I did want to point out, however, is handle missing values. So by default, Eureka will automatically handle missing values and replace it with the statistical mean. Um, but there are other options uh, that you can select within the prepared data tab. So if we wanted to, for instance, um, ignore the entire row, we'd be able to do that. We can uh, set it to the mean value, or excuse me, the median value, we can set it to zero. Uh, there's a multitude of options that we can use to handle missing values. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just gonna let it run in default, uh, and we'll fill it in with statistical mean. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the target expression. Okay, so we're on the set target screen. The set target screen is probably one of the most important screens within Eureka. You have the ability to make a lot of uh, changes as to how you go about searching for a target expression, or excuse me, a, uh, a model. In this case, it's already pretty much set up um, for, it's set up for the purposes of this tutorial. Uh, we have claim amount, uh, or you, we're essentially telling Eureka, model claim amount is a function of all these other variables. If you look, you may see a couple of odd ones in here. Uh, I think it might be worth uh, explaining that. So Eureka treats cate uh, categorical data um, by basically creating uh, Boolean values. So it adds kind of a uh, uh, hidden column to your data for category one, and then it has a true false for uh, all the different uh, categories there with it. So that's why you see kind of uh, perhaps some of these weird question marks there. It's nothing you need to worry about. Um, Building blocks, so when you look at the data, a uh, couple things jump out at me. One, um, uh, as I pointed out earlier, claim amount extremely sparsely populated uh, in terms of uh, positives. So we're gonna need to adjust for that. The other thing is that this isn't really, um, it doesn't appear to be cyclical or seasonal in nature. It's not like time series related uh, data. So what that means is that we really don't need um, uh, some of the building blocks, we can eliminate some. So for instance, uh, the trigonometry functions, uh, sine and cosine, we can get rid of those. Um, but we may also wanna add another one, which is uh, the uh, logistic function. So we can go ahead and select that. Great, okay. So uh, we also have the ability to change what, uh, how we prioritize the generated solutions or how we kind of rank them based on uh, error metrics. We're gonna use absolute error. Um, I think that's fine for the purposes of this competition, although we do have options for a few other ones. I should mention, if you guys have suggestions as to other error metrics that you would like included in Eureka, please contact us. Uh, just shoot us a message at contact at Newtonian. Um, but like I said, we're gonna leave it on absolute error for now. So as I mentioned uh, just a second ago, the claim amount column is extremely sparsely populated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna weight that by the number of occurrences. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see uh, basically one divided by the number of occurrences of claim amount. This will essentially weight uh, records that have claim amounts um, proportionately, or basically it ranks them uh, so, they make, so they're weighted heavier. So let's go ahead and select that. Okay, awesome. So we are actually pretty close to starting our search where we may wanna hold off uh, or we may wanna actually do one more thing is uh, Eureka has the ability to uh, connect up to Amazon EC2. This is extremely, extremely valuable. I cannot stress it enough. Um, so if you think about your basic machine, uh, the one I'm using is one of the new MacBook Pro Retinas. That has eight cores. Um, 
with Amazon, we have the ability to spin up 16 cores, 32 cores, 64 cores, you know, whatever it may be, it can exponentially uh, improve the speed at which you discover new solutions. So instead of having to spend or let your computer run for two days or a day, uh, you can let it run for a couple hours depending on the number of cores you select uh, and you'll find a, a great solution. So let's go to the start search tab. Um, just to refresh, our target expression set, we turned off a couple of the building blocks. Our error metric is the one that we want. And we've turned on row weighting to better accommodate for uh, the lack of data in the claim amount column. Great, so we're ready to start our search. I've already gotten this one underway uh, just while uh, I was transferring screens. So you'll note a couple things here. One, uh, we document the amount of time the search has been going on. What we say the number of cores that the search is being run on, that includes both cloud and local cores. For this uh, machine, it's actually set up on its own private cloud. I, I think I may have mentioned that earlier. Um, so while it may start with eight, uh, as the servers get kicked online uh, and become available for um, basically make their computational resources available, the CPU course will go up. Great, so as mentioned, this is a project file that we actually, this is the same data, we just let it run for a longer period of time. Uh, so when I wrote the blog article, I think I, it was about the two hour mark, but I wanted to see what else we could find. Um, let's walk through kind of each uh, aspect of this screen and just explain a little bit what it means. Search time, obviously that's pretty self-explanatory. CPU cores, that includes both your local cores and uh, if you have it set up, any Amazon cloud cores or uh, any Eureka private cloud cores. So what that means is you have the ability to sync this up to Amazon if you want, um, but you also have the ability if you were to uh, buy a Eureka dedicated server license, to have all of, Eureka, all of your Eureka desktop searches run off of a server. Um, performance, you can see that we've gone through roughly uh, 310,000 generations. Um, and the stability and maturity, um, just to explain those a little bit, because those come up a, a, fair, a fair amount. What these are really trying to do is they're trying to give you an indication of uh, when a good time is to stop the search. Um, obviously, a lot goes into that, and that's probably one of the trickier things, I guess, about symbolic regression is, okay, well, when do I have the right solution? Um, we'll talk a little bit more on that later, but these are really trying to give you an indication of that. If you look at this screen, um, again, it's somewhat self-explanatory. What this is showing you is the progress of your model search over time uh, using mean absolute error as the error metric. And if you look at this graph, you can see some pretty sharp drops. And what we, how we tend to view those is those are important moments uh, in your data modeling or in your data search. So if you look here, there, there, and there, all represent uh, at least, or potentially represent uh, Eureka latching onto some truth about uh, the model. It's not necessarily the most accurate uh, that it could be, but it's latching onto the, uh, a pretty significant discovery in terms of increasing the predictive accuracy of the model. Uh, down here, this is a project log. Um, it's basically just going to show you um, uh, new solutions as it comes across them, uh, as well as the fit. So the fit here, this is actually the mean absolute error, um, which we can also see uh, once we jump to the view results tab. So let's go ahead and jump over. Here we have listed all of our solutions um, that Eureka has come across, uh, or it deemed you know, somewhat appropriate. It's uh, sorted by default using a ratio of compl solution, solution complexity versus accuracy. So the number of terms versus the accuracy of the solution. Um, down here, uh, we have a, a bunch of different error metrics, but uh, the one that we kind of want to look at is the mean absolute error. Um, what that, the mean absolute error, since it's tied to the um, claim amount, what that essentially says is Eureka, uh, on average, is able to predict the claim amount within uh, $123, plus or minus. Um, without doing further analysis, it's kind of tough to tell whether that is you know, extremely good or extremely mediocre. Um, my hunch is that uh, it's good enough for the purposes of this demo, but the reality is, is that if you were to you know, really want to use this in a real-world application, you would need to uh, do a couple things. One, you'd probably want to prepare your data a bit more. Um, two, uh, you might want to think more about the building blocks you're using, um, as well as how uh, you're weighting the claim amount. And then three, um, 
computational resources and search time. The more time and the more computational resources you give Eureka, the better uh, or the faster and deeper uh, Eureka is, it, or the faster, the more faster and deeper Eureka is able to search. Um, goes without saying. So for the purposes of this, uh, this shows results after we ran it for roughly three hours. Um, just walking through this, here you can also see a little bit of what I was talking about in terms of the search progress. Each blue dot represents a solution. Um, we're currently looking at the most complex as well as the most accurate solution. Um, the way we kind of look at, you know, hey, is this the right time to stop a search is um, seeing uh, obviously all the other error metrics I mentioned earlier, but also um, has it plateaued? Has it been? Has it stayed at um, you know the same level of error for the you know relatively the same amount of time, um, or for an extended amount of time? So again, here these look very interesting to us, um, simply because uh, they seem to represent that Eureka is latched on to kind of an element of truth uh, while searching for a model. Tricky to use with a mouse pad. <laughs> um, Anyhow, so there are a couple of other tools that I want to show you guys before we uh, before I let you go. So if we jump over to report and analyze, we can do a couple different things with this. Um, one of the more popular ones is to quick evaluate and predict values. So what we can do is we could open up um, the test data set, import it into, uh, there's actually a, I'll show you. So we can say, okay, we'll take the, the model that we found and then run it against the test data and then tell me what the results are in terms of uh, the important metrics. Um, for this, model statistics on a data set. Uh, data set one is the training data set. This is the model we discovered. So if we click run, um, it may pause for a sec just because I have a lot of other things open, um, but it's gonna go off and calculate uh, all the important statistics um, for this given model. So it's looking at everything from you know, the mean absolute error um, to R squared to all, you know, a lot of other things that you potentially want to keep. And you have the ability to save that report to your desktop. So that being said, that's pretty much the uh, whole content of this tutorial. Um, I would encourage you guys, uh, please, if you have suggestions for another tutorial or if you have uh, suggestions as to how to better improve this or maybe a different tangent, please reach out to us. Please contact us. Uh, we love your guys' feedback uh, and we love the fact that you guys are heavy users of the tool. I've gone ahead and put some of our contact details on the screen. Eureka is free to use on uh, data sets of 200 rows by five columns. Uh, you can test it uh, for free uh, for 30 days on unlimited data sets. Um, we would go ahead and encourage you guys to do that. If you have any questions as mentioned, please feel free to contact me directly. Uh, my email address is up on the screen. Alternatively, uh, if you want to just send an email to all of us, you can send an email to contact at newtonian.com. Uh, in terms of the services that we offer, uh, obviously we are a software uh, developer or software development company first, uh, but we also do entertain some pilot studies uh, depending on the data. Uh, so that basically gives you the resources of our data scientists uh, as well as our software to try and find correlations within uh, your data. So thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to contact me and have a great rest of your day.